Okay, so about a year ago or so, uh, Candace Owens, uh, who is an independent thinker, a uh, conservative political activist uh, from the States, and Russell Brand, who, as we know, was uh, in Hollywood movies and former drug addict and uh, philosopher, you know, thinker, political activist as well, but on the left, uh, they got together on the Under the Skin podcast, on Russell Brand's podcast, and had it out uh, in a, an incredible battle of ideas, and I thought it was a really great discussion. This is actually a video that I've been wanting to make for a long time, ever since I watched that uh, video, that, that, that podcast, because I felt like, and I think Russell Brand actually says this in, in one part of the show, the differences in their thinking are so slight. I wanted to play that kind of centrist perspective and, and kind of you know, te- you know, voice my opinion and 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 have a look at kind of what they were saying, and if I could offer a different uh, perspective, just so I could learn as well, and kind of give it out there as a review of the show to see what you thought. And I've just taken some snippets from the show, some some parts that I really wanted to touch upon, and uh, you know, so please don't think that this is the full show because they got into a hell of a lot of deep conversations here and it was a really, really brilliant show. So I do urge you to check it out. I will put it in the description for you so that you can view that. So the way they start the show, I think, is the most important thing of any uh, political conversation, ideological conversation in today's day and age, especially with what's going on in the States right now with everything being so partisan and confrontational and divisive. They started by holding hands in unison and... Uh, finding common ground in their belief in God. Let's take a look. Do you feel ready? I always feel ready. You believe in God? I believe in God. We're laughing then, aren't we? No. <laughs> <laughs> we're la- no, we laugh. I mean, like uh, we are supported by invisible forces that always. are benevolent and kind. Always. Great way to start the show before things get crazy. We just have to remember, I remember um, my, uh, my partner Siobhan, she said, now the next time we have an argument, try to say this, say, hey, same team, I love you, but dot, dot, dot. It just made me feel a little bit better about everything. It was normally about the dishes. It still is actually normally about the dishes. Great way to start the show. Let's have a look at what happens next. Um, but what I, I do demand is that people abandon a victim mentality, right? I think that that is, has become a cancer in our society. Victim mentality. I've seen yes. you talk about this. Yes. Now, give, me, give us some background on it because some English <laughs> people won't know what you mean. It's just the oppression Olympics. You know, Everybody wants to say, I, I deserve more because I'm more oppressed than you. I might say that I'm more oppressed than you because I'm black, right? And, and you're white. So instantly I'm more oppressed and I deserve more and my voice should be louder. And then we say, okay, well, you're a male and I'm a, I'm, I'm a woman. So instantly, I deserve even more because I'm a woman and you're a male and and women are more oppressed, which is totally a lie. Um, And I should have my voice heard louder. And and then you keep going gay, straight. And they've created all of these little these little pockets. And you have to figure out who is the most oppressed person. Mm -hmm. I guess it would be a disabled black female gay person would probably be the most. uh, If you want to win the oppression Olympics, that's it. So here Candice is talking about what she calls the victim mentality, which actually is I think think a Nietzschean idea as far as uh, uh, what I've learned from uh, Jordan Peterson talking about it, this idea that there can be like a slave morality and a superior morality, this idea that the world owes you something. And irrespective of true political or economic oppression, I think a victim mentality is something that pervades the uh, those spectrums. And I don't think a victim mentality is healthy at all. And I think that we can all adapt our thinking. This is actually more of a psychological conversation, I would think anyway, is that rather than thinking truly like the world owes you something, and that may or may not be true, acting as if you are the creator of your own world. And, you know, I've thought long and hard about the victim mentality because I thought from the progressive side of things, well, what about those who truly are politically, economically, you know, even socially oppressed, people that have really bad family upbringings, people that don't have friends to help them pick themselves up by their bootstraps and all that kind of thing. And then you read books like Man's Search for Meaning, Viktor Frankl, Concentration Camp Survivor. You read some of the stuff that Edith Eager is putting out now, also a concentration camp survivor. You read Alexander Solzhenitsyn, The Gulag Archipelago, all he wrote in part three or four, I think, of that massive book, what he described as being the ascent of the soul. So through suffering, identity and purpose and meaning is found. And Viktor Frankl was huge on this idea that we have, you know, 
the ability to choose our attitude and that 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 pause between stimulus and response is, is what we can control. That is massive, and that I think is something that everyone should aspire to to cultivate. It's a skill that can be developed, and one of the ways that we do that, I'll be the first to put my hand up and say that I don't do this as much as I should, is that meditation is a great way to become more aware and observant of that pause between stimulus and response. That is where our attitudes are formed. That is where we can observe our thinking and therefore create our reality, because if we push that a little further... You see that we actually can't perceive a true objective reality. We can only see it through the illusion of our own perceptive filters, our own subjective experience. That is a Buddhist idea. And it's very, very true. So what we have to think about there is if I'm not enjoying my situation, if I'm suffering in my present environment, what is a a point B, a goal, a future, a vision that I can look forward and aspire to, to, to encounter? And how can I make that happen thereby becoming the creator of my own universe. So I think irrespective of where you are on the political spectrum, moving away from a victim mentality is something that we should all aspire to do. I see what you mean. But if I imagine a like uh, you know, a gay disabled, and if you are gay disabled, what was the other black bit? female? Black female. Yeah. If I imagine that person, I don't like you know, and I'm sure there's even within that category, I'm sure there's lots of lots of and lots of variety. But when I think of the most powerful people in the world and the people with the most influence, not many of them are gay disabled black females it's essentially the game of identity politics right so you know because i'm a white man i therefore might sit at the top and at the most privileged position if you're playing the identity politics game and i i personally don't like identity politics i think it really really um impedes upon people's ability to think for themselves and be open to diverse ideas that said it is often the case that people that belong to different identity groups tend to have the same uh, opinions and beliefs. It's not always true, but you can imagine people, and it's it's probably becoming less and less true now with the with the rise of globalism, uh, which is obviously a good thing because after all, you know, we should be measured by uh, not the color of our skin, but by the content of our character, of course. So we want diverse ideas and opinions, so that ideas and opinions can battle it out, not the people themselves. But as globalism is still on the rise right now, we're not there where we all are connected and, you know, not everyone is on social media and people do uh, are subject to abject poverty and all these kinds of things. Certain groups will subscribe to the same kinds of ideas and belief systems. And that is, after all, how we can all get along. You know, if my morality is the same is the same as yours, essentially that I believe killing is wrong, we might be able to get along a little better so that I know that if I don't upset you, you're not going to stab me in the back. With Crony capitalism the- is what we're talking about. And that's something that we, I'm, I'm fully against, you know. So um, but I'm talking about just as an economic model. Capitalism is the only proven model that lifts people out of poverty, which is why I don't I'm, agree with that. Right. And, but that we're talking wrong. about when the that's banks wrong. all, you know, it doesn't collude, lift that's people terrible. Out of capitalism is terrible. Like, capitalism doesn't do that. Yes, it does. <laughs> that's why. That, why do you think America is America? Look, what made America America? What, you, what are you talking about when you say America? Do you think there is one thing called America underneath a flag? Like we're like, oh, yippee IA, this is America. Yes, There's the, un- the America of poor people. United- There's the America of rich people. There's all sorts of America. And There's it, all sorts of experience of America. In America, it is proven that if you make good choices, if you stay out of trouble, if you don't have children out of wedlock and you have a job, you will... All right, there's like moral codes. Yeah, there- Okay, so this is this conservative idea about capitalism, and it is, it's, you know, capitalism is innate to the biological uh, human organism, our ability to work for incentive and pick ourselves up by our bootstraps, and that is obviously all fundamentally true. However, I don't think that capitalism is the only way that we can reach those kinds of, uh, you know, uh, neurochemical cocktails, feel good, positive emotion, all that kind of stuff. I think it's, uh, I think what we need to, 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 to do is, is look at the political landscape, the economic landscape, I should say, as a constantly uh, changing progressive thing. And capitalism seems to be what's working really well now. It's obviously not perfect. Because it's not perfect, it's constantly changing and being you know, filtered with new ideas and, and people looking at it in different ways. And lots of people are now talking about social democracy. This is something where I think Candace, being from the US, is probably subject to this 
innate uh, fear of communism. And I think she has every right to, based upon what the 20th century showed us with communism, what Karl Marx was writing about, and the capitalists would, would tend to say, you know, it's a lovely idea in theory, but look at what it leads to. And I tend not to like that idea because if, if, we, if we view... Uh, socialism as the, as, as I suppose, the gateway to communism, well, then we haven't really learned anything from the 20th century. And it means that we are, because that's what happened, that will always be that way. And I don't really like that idea of thinking. I always take this back and look at it through a psychological lens because I have a background in counselling. And I would like to think that, you know, at least from the individual perspective, and hopefully that will pervade into the social perspective and the collective, we don't have to keep making the same mistakes and falling into the same pits. I think that human beings are incredible at learning. We are learning machines and and we build things and we are curious all the time. And as so long as we understand why the 20th century happened, and, you know, as uh, Candace says in the show that, you know, communism and that, that kind of far left thinking was responsible for the deaths of over 100 million people, which is a disgusting number. So long as we think that socialism will always lead to that and the only other opportunity we have is capitalism, we're not actually getting anywhere. And what we want to do is look back at the 20th century and nut it out and, and audit it. Even though we have so much, we should do it again to make sure that that doesn't happen. But bringing in some of those perhaps socialistic ideas so that people aren't always ending up at the bottom of a tyrannical hierarchy of capitalism. I'm not obviously saying that capitalism is innately tyrannical, but it can lead to people bottoming out, and that's obviously not a good thing. I agree, but do you not think this individualistic culture is in itself destroying the principles at a spiritual, human level of community? Do you not think when people see this economic inequality... So this is something I obviously have to agree with Russell Brand here on. I believe that uh, individualism in itself, there are very good things about it. Uh, You know, I started this conversation by agreeing with Candace Owens... Um, absolutely, you know that victim mentality is uh, is a dangerous mentality for the self. You know, not necessarily because I think, oh, you know, if everyone believes that they're oppressed, well, then what the hell is this kind of? You know, the government's got to get massive, and we've got to give money to everyone, and you know, that's not good for individuals because we want to feel one of the most powerful, fundamental uh, markers of psychological well being is autonomy and the um, the awareness that we have power and control within our own lives. Now, obviously, that is a spectrum, and people have less power than myself and more power than you or whatever it is, but uh, autonomy is such such an important marker of psychological health, and I feel that people are, and that's not just what I feel, actually. This is actually statistically reported. People are becoming a hell of a lot more lonely, more depressed, more anxious, a lot more existentially confused. A lot of my work with the counseling was in helping people with existential confusion and finding meaning and purpose in their lives. And I think a lot of this is coming from the disregard of community because we just don't live like that anymore. Like I'm actually talking through a camera right now and I wish I was talking to people in the same room as me. That's a little bit hard right now with the COVID virus and everything, but that that lack of community on the rise of individualism, whether you call it neoliberalism, whatever it is, uh, it's 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 it can be dangerous. I'll try to stay in the middle here. It can be dangerous to our socialistic mammalian biological needs. We are a social species. We feel the best when we're around people. Whether you're introverted or extroverted, it helps with how we've survived. Uh, there's power in numbers. I could go on. Do you not think that economic inequality creates in a human being a sense of injustice, of unfairness? Because people, do you know what, Candice? 90% of people that are rich, do you know why they're rich? They was born rich. Well, if that's true, that's obviously not a good thing. <laughs> and this is what's a, pro- a problem I've noticed with a lot of great people, is they sort of believe that their greatness is something that can be replicated and i don't think it it can can. i see so i believe in the individual you don't that's our fundamental differences but the primary goal of the individual should be to serve the community okay so there are two different viewpoints here and uh i actually thought you know when i wanted to make this uh this this video this is one of the reasons why i wanted to do it candace just kind of puts an absolute in front of russell brand and says you know i believe in the individual and you don't and i think where they're missing the point here is that both believe in the individual, but Russell tends to, and correct me if I'm wrong, Russell, but Russell tends to believe that it's 
it's not enough just to say to someone, hey, you can do it yourself. Because even that assumption that someone can do them can do it themselves assumes or presupposes that they know what they're supposed to do. And this is that thing where this is what I love about uh, free education, right, is that I think we are very good at uh, becoming unconscious to things that were once very, very difficult. You know, even just like learning how to use this camera, right? When I first got this camera, it was the hardest thing in the world. And now I can just turn it on and, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing. But to someone that's never used the camera, I'm sure it would be like, when I first started using the camera. Same with the microphone, same when I first started playing guitar, same with writing. Hours and hours and hours and hours of practice renders the skill unconscious. But that doesn't mean that it's not hard. It just means that you've forgotten how hard it was because it's easy now, because you've done it so much. And when Candice is so forthright in her, uh, you know, that, that whole thing of individual responsibility, individual, I believe in the individual so do I, and so does Russell Brand. I think everyone should. You know, no one should identify themselves as a victim. That's bad for the individual. But what we have to remember is that individuals, even that idea that you can do it, presupposes that the person knows what they're supposed to do. They just haven't done it because they're lazy or something. No, I don't think that's true. I think education and learning more and and and, and cultivating integrity and seeing things from different sides will help as you do it more, as you learn more, as you grow, as you see different perspectives. And only when you're at the top of the pyramid, after you've seen all sides, can you recognize, hey, you actually can do this down there. But they don't know what you're looking at because they're only standing at one side of the pyramid. I don't agree with divisive policy. You're this gender, you're that color. I think we are one and we should look for ways to find common connections. I've got more, probably more in common with you, even though there's so much different about us politically right. and we believe in, in that we're both mouthy individuals yeah that's exactly right and i agree with that and i think that that's important discussion to have okay i wanted to put this part in the video because i think it's really really important i think we are all at the moment getting lost in the the in the battles and forgetting about the 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 fundamental goal here you know we all want the same things we're all human you know we all came from fucking fish if you think about it if you go back far enough i think mammals are about 210 million years old so beyond that we're all in the sea and beyond that we were single celled organisms and beyond that we were stardust and you know beyond that who who knows but we get lost in the little things, whether it's individualism or collectivism, whether it's left or right, whether it's communism or crony capitalism or whatever it is, you know, none of that is really, really helpful when you take it back and look out, have a look from far enough back and go, hang on, what are we actually trying to do here? Well, we all want to be happy. We all want to feel like we have meaning and purpose and that uh, people love us. And we want to look back on our lives and our deathbeds and go, you know what? That ride was sick. I really, really enjoyed that. I can't wait for someone else to do it. But politics is just management. What is politics if it's not about helping human beings gain access to resources? No, it's... it's, it's, What is it then? I I really think that... what What should be the function of a politician? What, what do you think that you is? You tell me. You're the bloody expert I mean, at tipping supposed point to be, or it, turning point yeah, or whatever I mean, it's called. Go on. What should it be? Right. Function? I mean, I think it's, it's gotten to the point now that it just becomes about them trying to enrich their own pockets. No, but what should it be? I think it should be they are there to protect the rights of the people that have already been established. You know, they, they, they are, they're supposed to be representing well, their they're constituents. They're doing okay, the people that are all bloody, bloody established. What about... The no. people that need help. This is a really good point. Uh, I interviewed Terry Butler, who is a federal shadow minister here in Australia, and she made that point. She's on. She's a. She's a, in the Labor Party, and she said to me, "For people who want smaller governments, you know those the classic libertarian types. That's all well and good for you because it sounds like you're in a position where you actually don't need the government. But what about those people that actually are relying on the government and none of this could be more pertinent than what happened this year where the government and the, the you know their 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 fiscal position and all this kind of thing was really really important for people who just lost their jobs because a virus swept the world. That I think is a really, really important consideration because it means that if you're in a position where you don't need the government, you're in a pretty good position. There are people who do rely on those handouts. We're not talking about, uh, you know, if you are relying on those handouts, well, therefore, you know, you're not growing your mind and learning and adapting and, you know, um, all that kind of suffering engenders purpose and meaning. 
that can come as well. But sometimes we do just find ourselves in positions where it would be nice to get that extra $200 so we can feed the family. Utopianism has got to be the aim. You can't be seriously saying that... that Utopianism the, the, should be the aim, did you yes, just say? Yes, it should be the that's, aim. That's, that's, that's it should be the aim. Literally, like, like that's... Why, where else would be the aim? We're in hell? Like, we're, we're, hell on we're earth? Like we're in like Willy, we're in Willy Wonka land. We it can't happen. happen. It can't happen. Human beings are always going to be about human beings. Uh, since the since the biblical times, so th- th- no, we're always going to have. Bible, the point of the Bible is that we will transcend. No, no, that man he, will transcend. Here's, but we can get beyond our primal desires. Right. Our primal desires that you're trying to turn into systems, greed, jealousy, conservatism. No, no, no. It's the opposite. I'm saying you have to acknowledge that this exists. This is why it's foolish when people You've say got to give it. up all of your but rights it's being to the government. And then what happens? What happened to Venezuela when they gave up all their rights and they sold? this utopian concept that Russell Brand loves and there's going to be flowers in Venezuela <laughs> and Skittles and we're all going to go to Willy Wonka this every day. Yay! Say, cons- and what happened? Oh, you found out what happens when you give all your money to the government? The government keeps it. That's what they found in Venezuela because you know why? Because the government is governed by human beings and human beings are greedy so you and are selfish negative. You're, and terrible oh, human oh beings. Oh my God, that's not all so they are. They, no, right, it's I not. Thought this. But I'm, when you give them I'm, all of your money, you're going to see what happens. Okay, this is probably my favorite part of the podcast because Russell Brand is talking about the need to have this kind of ideal future in our minds so that everything that we're doing right now is set up in a way that will get us to that heaven from a you know from a from a biblical perspective or a point b or a or a, or a better tomorrow and so that's that utopian idea and conservatives will look at the people that talk about utopia and go you guys are full of shit you know you're all loopy and uh and they have every right to say that because candace then goes on and says utopianism can't be the idea because human beings are fundamentally flawed we're savages we're primal we uh you know as soon as things are really really good we just tear it down what i think is so cool here is that the irony in in russell brand bringing up this idea that the bible the point of the bible is about transcending going beyond you know reaching for that better tomorrow Candace's point is essentially what was 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 spoken about in the Old Testament with the snake in the Garden of Eden. That even in this perfect utopia, uh, you know, the serpent still knocks on the door, and human beings fundamentally ruin it. And uh, I love that. I just thought that was really really ironic. Both are kind of drawing on the Bible in some way, shape, or form there. But my personal belief. You need a tomorrow. I, I always look at this kind of stuff from a through a psychological lens, and people get very, very existentially afraid. Sometimes they even get nihilistic if they don't have a future to strive towards. Viktor Frankl, who was the concentration camp uh, prisoner I was speaking about before, literally dedicated his life to helping people with their existential suffering. He termed it logotherapy, and it was this idea of how to cultivate meaning and and that happiness is ensued as we are moving from point A to point B. This is a very, very important idea because otherwise, as Russell Brand says, what are we doing? Are we just running around here only to die? Meaning has to come from within. Meaning is possibly one of the most important things that we can actualize in our lives. Okay. I'm lazy. They'd much ra- yeah, there you go. So they'd I'd much rather, rather I find sit it hard to get out. get success. And then you know what? When you get to a certain age and you realize you've accomplished nothing. I'd rather then just all have of some sudden, heroin and just beca- masturbate. <laughs> that, I really would. I mean, but most people are lazy. It's true. <laughs> I'd rather be in bed sleeping sometimes when I get up and I do stuff because I realize I have to be yeah, a but you're different. human being. But you're here, different. But here's the thing. You ask telling me that I have to exercise compassion and understand that people are lazy because they woke up one day and they're 27 and they realize they've accomplished nothing. So they turn to videos that tell them that it's not their fault. It's somebody else's. It's the white man. It's the rich man. It's the tall man. It's the short man. Right. I don't care about any of that. I am telling you that personal responsibility is really the key to unlocking life. You cannot deny Right. Yes, I don't are there look, catastrophic I don't... things that happen and do you exercise compassion in those moments? Are... That's why I give to charity, right? That's not going to be enough because that... What that... do you want me to do? Take in the lazy people in my home? <laughs> I've already got a cat. So I think Candice is obviously just very, very, very much against the uh, victim mentality. And I think she has every right to be with her, with the background that she talks about. And, you know, it really sounds like that from her background, she relied heavily on her ability to become more open-minded and, and strive and push hard. And, she, you know, she's, she's done a hell of a lot. She, I think she's pregnant right now. I think she's having a child. But she's uh, she's written a book. She's She's 
builds an incredible audience of people that really follow her. And that's obviously something not to be disregarded because, uh, you know, that assumes that everyone who's following her is just dumb or is just forced to. And that's obviously not the case. Complicated. Yeah. These are times when the old divides, excuse me, and the old polarities are starting to dissolve. While we feel like people are becoming more and more opposed to each other, I think we're becoming closer and closer to rejecting the systems that oppress us, not just economically, That's a, these are the crumbs. I'm talking about spiritually, preventing people from realizing their potential. So I do believe in the power of previously oppressed people, but I think to, like people, I, you know, as an individual, I wouldn't like to continue to revel in my misery. All oh, this happened, that's that what went people want to do. I don't think that's what people want to do. I don't think people enjoy necessarily reveling in their misery. Uh, the only kind of thing that I have to go on with this is uh, as when I was working with clients in the counseling world, there were people that I would say were struggling with that victim mentality. But I don't think a victim mentality is necessarily something that we consciously decide to wake up to and 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 have on our shoulders. You know, it's like, oh, you know, I'm just going to have a victim mentality. You know what? Today, the world owes me something. I don't think that's how people operate. I think people reach these points in their lives or have never been shown that you can self-actualize and transcend, you know, all these things that uh, that these guys are obviously talking about. But a victim mentality, I don't think is necessarily consciously decided upon. And laziness feels good. You know, hedonism feels good with this, you know, consumption-based uh, society that we live in this day and age. Uh, it's very, very easy to numb ourselves with pleasure. We can uh, we can watch as much YouTube and video and Netflix as we want. We can eat as much at the press of a button. It's easy to lose ourselves in those, you know, hedonistic ways. But I do believe that's not what we truly want. I think what we truly want is to mean something and have purpose. And that's where we get the most positive emotion. It's not necessarily a spiritual thing to say. I think it's a very, very neurochemical, neuropsychological truism. Uh, you look at what goes on in the brain with, with with the dopamine secretion and you know what goes on with, uh, with serotonin when we've actually achieved a goal and that striving, that pushing is, is when we operate at our best. And I actually think it's when we operate uh, best as, as societies and communities. So there's both a conservative and a progressive argument uh, for that one. What do you think about reparations? But the pain doesn't exist anymore. What do we think about... I'm against it. I'm You're against, against it reparations. It's, it's, it's but there would be no the United Kingdom. Slippery, there would be no United States of America. It's the most slippery slope I've ever heard in my entire life. Well, where do you think it would slip and slide it, off to? Are you kidding? Equality. No. I genuinely just wanted to put that one in there because I thought it was funny. <laughs> where do you think true power lies? Within the individual. Within yourself. Well, that's not true, is it? Because the, what individual on this planet is as powerful as Halliburton? Well, what do you? What, what's your measure of power? Ability to get what you want done. But the, what? Do, what do you want done? That varies from individual to individual. So the power rests within the individual. But there is a uniform concept of will, and the people whose will is most easily exerted. There is a there is a hierarchy. So I would say, and the most powerful people are people that are generally born into positions where the power was already had already been accumulated and exists. All right. But it's definitely true, though, mm. Candice. And, and we're going to edit this so that your response will be, Russell, you've really changed my mind there. <laughs> I thought long and hard about this question, where does true power lie? It was necessary for them to define power. Uh, Candice is very, very, very uh, strong and fervent in her belief of the individual. And I think it's really, really powerful to do that. I think imagine uh, imagine having a mother like, like Candice and be like, you can literally do it. I'm going to show you how to do it. You know, there's gonna, it's going to be hard. This is the amount of responsibility that you're going to have to take on. But look at what you'll be able to accomplish. That would be an incredible parent to have, an incredible uh, friend to have as well. But I think power can also be... Uh, used from the economic and political perspective of uh, access to resources. And based upon the, the way that we live in the West now, the more money you have, the more access to resources that you have. And I think, you know, perhaps there was a, a difference between what Russell Brand was, was focusing on there. Candace might have been looking at it through, again, that psychological lens of that ability to, you know, control more than you think you can control by doing more and, and achieving things you didn't think you could previously achieve. When I interviewed Wim Hof, one of the things he said was that the the greatest thing about a cold shower is that it's a little thing of breaking down a, a, a cemented or limiting belief system. People don't think they can do cold showers. They jump into a cold shower. If that little limiting belief system breaks up, people are like, what else can I do that I actually don't think I can do? So that's a really powerful psychological tool. I think 
Russell Brand was talking about the economics uh, of money and access to resources there. But I suppose both are true. I have to believe that love is more important than hate, that unity and togetherness it are is. more powerful than individualism. It is, but, it, but you, you, once, you, once you, you have to empower individuals, I do not want to be the same person that you are. I don't want to be treated like we're the same person. I don't want to be the same person that any person around me is. I don't want to be tr- you know, treated as if we're the exact same person. You can cookie cut um, society and say, oh, this is what Candace likes for breakfast, so that must be we're all just going to have the same cereal for breakfast. I don't like that. Hey. We are individuals. You should celebrate the individual. I do agree with that. And the individual that. should come together uh, no, to form a community that takes care of issues for that, individuals uh, that can't take care of themselves. I absolutely agree with Candice here. I think that the best way to actualize world peace is when you have a whole bunch of individuals running around who are internally happy. And I can't rely on you for my happiness. I can't do that thing where I negate responsibility of my own emotional uh, ups and downs and put that onto you and make you responsible for that. I have to do that in myself. And that is actually something that Russell Brand talks about all the time, which I think is a really, really powerful idea. He says, oh, you know, I'm doing that thing again, mate. I can't do that bloody accent, but I'm doing that thing again where I'm putting the responsibility and onus on you to make me feel happy and I shouldn't do that. And that they're really good videos. If you watch that stuff, uh, it's in his relationships playlist. So definitely check it out. Would you be willing, if over time, when human beings come up with better ideas, as human beings evolve, if better ideas than free market capitalism were to emerge, would you be open to those ideas? I'm, I love ideas. If there was something it better exists, than... It exists a possibility a better idea than globalized free market capitalism. It exists in the realm of infinite possibility through which all realized ideas sure. must have surely have traveled. There exists now better ideas, ideas that are more fair more just they are there waiting to happen these ideas and when they arrive which they will you will be open to them i will be the first person that opens my loving arms and says come here a new idea that's going to fix everything and this final video i think is a really interesting way to finish it off because on uh one side of things you have candace talking about the fact that utopia is impossible and that we can't reach it and human beings are perfectly imperfect and we always tear things down just when we're about to reach the 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 perfect state you can't have yang without yin and i agree with her but at the same time she's saying i'll be there when the better idea comes for me and uh i don't know i suppose is that a little contradicting is it a bit counterintuitive perhaps it isn't perhaps i'm reading the wrong the wrong side of things there but you do have to strive and transcend and go further. And if today is better than it was yesterday, tomorrow might be even better than it is today. And that is the way that we always are. We're always in a process mediating from point A to point B. We're always becoming, we're always progressing. I am Tom Herning. I'm not Tom Hearn right now because who I am tomorrow will be 0.1% different than who I am today. So I think that is a really great way to finish off this uh, review and analysis of the podcast. Can I just say that these are the kinds of discussions personally uh, that I think we need the most right now when things are so partisan, we don't want to be talking to other people. Everyone on the left is crazy and stupid and communist and everyone on the right is dumb and fascist and uh, you know all, all these kinds of things. Carl Jung wrote something along the lines of most people don't listen because when you listen, you're forced to think and people are afraid of thinking. It was something like that. What I took from that means that when we're truly listening, it means that we're open to having our own ideas played around with and contended with. And we are obviously influenced and dictated by our ideas as though we're, you know, puppets, uh, you know, run and influenced by marionettes on strings and things. And that's a really powerful idea because it'll give you some indications to why people don't listen. It's not because they're terrible people, but it's because they're very, very attached to their ego and their identity and to have that identity ripped away from them means to have themselves fall into a cataclysmic abyss for eternity. And I'm going to, I'm going to end it there because I think it's a really, really great way to finish it off. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, I want to keep making more and more vids like this. I think it's really powerful to review podcasts when people come together with diverse opinions and ideas. I would love to hear what you think. Leave a comment in the comment section below. If you enjoy this kind of stuff, you can subscribe. And until next time, Bye for now.